I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel and welcome to our review of the live action Disney Beauty and the Beast film. I give the movie an A minus and sitting over here, she's been on the channel before, but she's using a new persona. She is Miss Movie Mayhem. What do you give the uh, movie? I give the movie an A. And over here is her mother, and she shall be known as Cinema Sweetheart. Cinema Sweetheart, what did you give this movie? I also gave this movie an A. All right, so we're going to do this uh, differently than what I usually do. So we're going to first, uh, of course, talk about the things we like and the things we didn't like. I asked the ladies uh, to think of at least three things or up to three things that they liked and up to three things that they didn't like. Now, obviously, by the scores, you can tell that there's a lot more things that we all enjoyed about this than uh, didn't. Uh, so just to keep things condensed, that's why I asked for those specific topics. So we're just going to talk about each topic as we go along. We shall start with the positive topic of Emma Watson as Belle. And that was one of her th uh, love. So tell us about Emma Watson as Belle. I think Emma Watson was portrayed perfectly as Belle. Belle is this bookworm. And when Emma Watson played in another movie, she was also a bookworm. And it just kind of, I, I saw Belle's character come to life with Emma Watson. And I think Disney did a really good choice putting Emma Watson into that role as Belle. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any thoughts on Emma Watson's performance? She is a great actress in this movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, before I get too far, uh, I should point out that Miss Cinema Sweetheart has not seen the original <laughs> animated <laughs> Disney film. Uh, she, uh, So she's uh, been obviously out uh, um, the concept of Beauty and the Beast has been uh, portrayed in various media. There's been television shows. There's been animated films by other studios. Uh, the topic of it has been used. It's even been used in King Kong. So the concept of Beauty and the Beast is certainly not foreign to her. But this is the she doesn't have the uh, experience of the first animated film with Disney. So she's fresh eyes to this, uh, which is gives her one perspective. Whereas she and I. We are not, are not only familiar with the animated film, but we are also uh, former employees with Walt Disney World. So we have met many friends of uh, these characters of Disney. So it's an uh, interesting perspective. We've got someone that's totally fresh. We've got some folks that are greatly experienced. Now, Miss Watson's performance, <coughs> I thought was excellent overall, but there was something that I uh, didn't like, and I would save that for the... Uh, negative discussion because it will be similar to a negative that she has. So I would say that negative, but I would say performance-wise, wonderful. Uh, I had no complaints about her performance at all. I don't have any complaints about anyone's performance at all. I think the cast was perfect. Uh, so let's go on to the next topic, which would be the graphics and uh, colors of the production. What did you think of the graphics, colors, in production? Colors were awesome, right on the mark. Um, from the dresses that the characters wore to the little detailed items inside the castle were awesome and great and beautiful. And along with the uh, colors, uh, one of your favorite types was set design. Uh, so tell me about the set design. I really enjoyed the set design because when you go into like the town, you know, it was, it was detailed. It was, you know, it was easy to kind of see around and see what was going on, but it was, the, the colors were right. You know, it was, it was just a really town like you would go into. I've been to an old towns. I've been to towns that have been set up like in the medieval times. It, it was just, the set design was really more realistic. And then when you go into the castle, your mind is blown because all of a sudden, you know, compared to the town where it's kind of like old, you come in here and everything is bright, it's beautiful, even though it's like dusty and stuff. It's, it was just amazing just how everything was. Yeah, I, I will agree. Um, this movie, along with the other Disney live action films, you, you're, you're translating 2D animation into 3D animation and you're trans. You're trying to make things that 
are fictional, extremely fictional. You got, you know, walking and talking appliances. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Try to work with <laughs> real actors and, you know, there's more digital effects and some people don't like digital effects, some people like practical effects, which is fine. But I would say that the attention to detail in costuming and sets yep. and lighting and characters uh, has, <clears throat> is really done well. The uh, special appliances characters work really well. The Beast looks fantastic. Uh, you pretty much, except for certain shots where you're someone like me who looks for digital or special effects, uh, notice those things, but still, in general, you s feel that Emma Watson is talking to a beast, and a bell is talking to a beast, and you're, or talking to a clock, or holding a candlestick, or whatever. Uh, it's very excellent set design, very excellent graphics, very excellent colors, so let's go on to the next topic, which would be the pacing of the romance, and the budding romance of Beauty and the Beast. So tell us about the uh, romance, uh, angle of the story. Like at the beginning how she was scared of the beast and then towards the middles where he pretty much saved her life when she was trying to escape and then when he let her go home I think she realized that she was falling in love with the beast mm -hmm. and at the very end when she realized she did love the beast and told the evil Gaston that she loved the beast. Now, along with the general concept of beauty and the beast, <coughs> like the beauty uh, falls in love with the beast, no matter what format of uh, media decides to handle that story, a uh, mm -hmm. topic of mm -hmm. Stockholm Syndrome often comes up. Do you feel that their relationship blossomed properly, despite the fact that she was originally captured, or uh, do you uh, find it a little too convenient or fairy ish or even wrong that a guy that locked up a, a woman, uh, they wind up falling in love. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> you have I don't know. I, <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's a fairy tale. I mean, you know? I wouldn't, you know, I was, I'm not surprised because I've seen the animated movie. But in like real life practical, you you don't fall in love with your captor. Mm. Like some people do though. Yeah. Yeah, but you you don't. Yeah. You know, she was some brainwashing to go along with it. It was so. more you know there's brainwashing and stuff. And for this, she all she did was just, you know, she she fell in love with him and like nothing. I mean, he didn't do anything to her to brainwash him. He was mean. He was nasty to her, and yet she he until he started changing. Did he? Did she? Did she to fall in love with him? He changed, not the girl. Let me point that out. The mm -hmm. man changed. Mm -hmm. So that's probably mm -hmm. why it works a little better. That the beast changed, and aside from a, a couple of growls and yells, um, and uh, the beast does let Belle go. You know, all these Disney versions. Uh, I don't know how it is for each uh, media, but you know, this is where she uh, does let Belle go. It totally uh, gets rough. So mm -hmm. you know, that's why I think it works a little better. Uh, than uh, the fear of Stockholm Syndrome or for the new trend that's going around weight culture. Or I think like I saw one version where he, he let her go for a month. Yeah. And he, he you can go, we must come back in 30 right. days. And right. and that's and then, and then when he comes back, he goes back in the capital. That's when Gaston um, yeah. goes to attack. But it wasn't as big. The, the fight scene wasn't as big. It was just like Gaston was the only one. Yeah. And the thing is, a lot of these fairy tales, as wonderful as they seem, especially with Disney interpretation, if you go to the source material, they are really cruel or nasty or mean. Like in Cinderella, you, uh, the ending of Cinderella, mm -hmm. the, they're like birds peck out the stepsister's eyes. And that was in the uh, uh, one of the... the in my uh, book, when I grow up, in one of my fairy tale books, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. They, it, it, yeah, so it's like these fairy tales are much crueler than they are. So we you don't know, just enjoy the Disney pleasantry when they give it to you. All right, uh, so see, now here's some of my things that I love. First thing, I love the fact that this movie was a full on musical. A lot of the live action Disney remakes, they will either avoid the songs or they'll use one or two signature songs, uh, like in uh, Jungle Book. 
you know, they, they knew, you knew you had to do their necessities, and they also opted to do uh, I Want to Be Like You, but all the other songs are gone. Uh, you can hear the background music of uh, Trust in Me when you see the Ka snake, but still, he, uh, Ka doesn't fully sing it. But still, a lot of these live action is okay, we're just going to be live action because, you know, it helps us the release. But with Beauty and the Beast, the music is so entwined with the development of the narrative. I was concerned that we're just going to do uh, Be Our Guest, because obviously you're going to have to do Be Our Guest. There's no way you can do Be Our Guest. Love that song. But, yeah, they do the whole gamut. They introduce some songs that either I didn't know were <clears> part <throat> of the soundtrack, or maybe they were originally part of the soundtrack, but they got cut, so they put it back in. Like, uh, I, I don't have the song that's written, so I don't know. I, no, 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 <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, if they didn't do that... Um, that very the opening song. The little town. Little the little town. I probably yeah. would have walked out because I, that's I, I, like yeah. I think the song is actually called Bell or Bonjour. I don't know. I, I Bonjour. I think it's called Bonjour. Yeah. yeah but but uh, if they didn't do that song, I would think I would have walked out because that's kind of like. So that yeah. So that that's kind of like a, that's my song, you know. Yeah. It, that's my, just like the opening of the movie, yeah. like. Yeah, my song is Gaston because I just love that song. I think it's the best villain song of all time. Uh, they don't do the. Uh, Every square entry is covered with hair. Now, that's my favorite part of the song. But I understand, I mean, he, he needs to stay in costume and, you know, in the anime. He's going to have someone rip off his shirt and then he's fine the next moment. You can't do that. Oh, I've actually been still. Uh, there's also tweaks in the songs uh, just to modernize it or make it fit better with the um, narrative. Uh, but it's all excellent. So I'm so happy. It was a full on musical and it was just delightful. The songs were delightful. The twists and tweaks to the songs were delightful. I was very, very happy. Uh, what did you think of the song and the music? Do you even really enjoy music? Do you enjoy music? I love music. I love music in movies. Mm -hmm. um, and dancing. The dancing part was hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, All together, it was a really good movie. I want to go see it again in 3D next time. But the dancing, the musicals were all great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, the next thing I loved were, of course, men in wearing high heels. You know, <laughs> during that time period, men wore heels. So I see all these guys wearing high heels, like, oh, wonderful. I wish I was in this movie. <laughs> uh, but I got plenty to, to, to in my closet over there. But along with that, uh, and I discussed this with them earlier, is one of the controversies of this movie is that the Fu, the character, the Fu was made gay. Now, in the original film, he's just a man serving that Gaston plays around. And personally, I don't really like it when characters that haven't been gay before are gayified or remade gay. For instance, uh, the superhero Iceman from the X-Men, he's been around for decades. And then very recently, Marvel Comics retconned him, so he's, been, so he's gay and he's just been in the closet uh, this whole time. I don't particularly like that. Whereas LeFou... He's the Wayland Smithers of Disney. He spends every waking hour catering to the whims of the most buff, most handsome, most manly, most adored man in the village. He literally sings the praises of Gaston, talking about the cleft in his chin and his muscles and his abilities. So if any character should and be And the look. Yeah, and look. <laughs> so it's like, if any character... <laughs> should be gay, you know, be made gay. It's that character. But of course there are people who have problem with that. So I just would love to wish to to have been with some of those folks who have a problem with that. And the gay moments are so brief. There are some people who are like, okay, well can we at least get a cut release of all the gay moments? There's like three gay moments that are like a, a second or two. You, you they're like blink and you miss it or look down at your popcorn, you probably miss it. And yet, I just wonder how they reacted when they saw all these men in makeup, in wigs, and, you know, the frilly things. Because it was France during that time period. It was custom for men to do that. But the first shot you see is the beast when he was a prince putting on makeup. <laughs> it's like, so it's like, I wonder how many folks who are have an issue with gays or transsexuals or any of that subject, you know, went into this, you know, decide, okay, I'll go into this movie. And the first thing you see of the main character it's him in makeup and you know, in a wig and heels. I just would love to know what those reactions are. You guys have any thoughts on, on the costume designs for the men? 
It was all. I think they, they like I said, they did the costumes really well. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was realistic. It, it seems like you know, if you, you went back into that time period, this possibly could have happened. Mm-hmm. Even though it's a total fairy tale, it's there. There was nothing I could say as the costumes being mm-hmm. off at all for that time period. Mm-hmm. For it's mm-hmm. now, you, Ms., um, oh, Ms. Go, go ahead. sweetheart. No, I would uh would love to go back in time to that time era because I just. The clothing they wore back then was just wonderful. Well, it, we had that well, it looks <laughs> wonderful, but it's uh, but it's a pain to get on and off. I mean, that, that's the, I mean, yeah. There were a lot of zippers back then. There's a lot of hooks and buttons and bodices and heavy things and bloomers and. Uh. <laughs> 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 now, uh, you <coughs> didn't see the animated uh, film, so I won't leave this question for you. But for your question, how do you feel about the Lefou character being uh, gay in this uh, version? It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it, the whole film was, you know, it was like it was quite humorous, you know. Like yeah. you, you could, like I said, you could honestly tell like he was kind of, and it was, it was just kind of, yeah. It, it was funny, like yeah, and, and and along the lines of a little bonus thing, like Josh Gad, this is the third thing I've seen him in. Uh, the first uh, being uh, Frozen, he played Olaf. And then the next thing was uh, Pixels, where he plays this geek that uh, helps save the world. And I just couldn't stand that character. But this character I love, Olaf, I enjoy. So it's like maybe he just needs to stick with Disney um, sidekick roles. Like if he does another Disney sidekick role, then that is awesome. I'll just like send him a letter, a letter or two and say, look, just stick with Disney sidekick roles. It's your wheelhouse. You're done now three. You're set for life. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, Josh Gad was really excellent in that one. And my final good thing, which actually will lead to my the bad things, was the narrative fixes. Uh, so, in the original story, you know, there was confusion about how old everybody was because the witch met a little boy, cast a spell on him, and the song be, uh, "Be Our Guest." It says, 10 years we've been rusting, even ever so much to dusting." So. Um, the prince, I think it has to be up to age 18 or 19 or even 20, whatever. He's an adult by the time the main story happens, but Chip seems to be around 7 to 10 years old. So when was Chip born? We know how, or, you know, how old is Chip versus how old the other characters are. And Mrs. Potts has a full, like, 12 children in the animated film, where in this one, she only has one child. <laughs> so, <I think> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Why is it that the servants stop aging, but the prince keeps aging? That, you know, that, that that's also, you know, is one of those. So in here, they they do a lot of fixing. It's probably because the beast is not an inanimate object. No, but the servants were. So why is it that the servants? Well, I mean, that's true. Maybe because they do turn into inanimate objects. That's why they don't age, and whereas the beast is an organic organic being, so that would be a good thing. But still, it's one of those little confusions. So throughout the movie, and, and especially in the instruction, they do little fixes. But they're doing some of those fixes, they, they introduce some new problems. So the, the spell, instead of being just the servants, the spell goes, all who live here. And when the spell is broken, uh, the servants are reunited with their loved ones. And like part of the spell was all the people in the town uh, forgot about it because that was another narrative problem. Why is it that the townspeople don't know about this giant castle <laughs> over in the woods and, yeah. and, and all those servants? I mean, all those servants were there, all those people know about it. And they must, not about, they must not know about it either. <clears throat> they got, it shows the curse because when <clears throat> um, Belle's father mm-hmm. he comes in and says, Hey, she's being killed out by this beast in this castle. Mm-hmm. Nobody believes him and they can't find the castle because they, they forgot about Because they forgot about the castle, so they don't believe. That, that Belle's been really been taken. They think that she ran away from a, a father who's keeping her captive. Right, right. But like, like, but in the animated film, it just said, okay, this girl was cast on the castle. But it's like, but it doesn't, doesn't seem much about the town. So in this movie, they talk about the town had a spell on it, so they forgot about it. But a lot of other servants were married or have relationships with people in the townsfolk. So I'm thinking, okay, even the spell erases the memories. Does the spell also erase? Uh, the, the closets of these people because, you know, if you're married, I'd imagine your spouse has clothes in the closet, so you go home, you're like, okay, I'm a woman, 
where are these guys' clothes in my house? I'm single. Who's been going out and putting these guys' clothes in my in my uh, closet? And so it, it, it introduced that element, which fixes certain problems, but it could another problem. Another problem I have, and it, it, it again, the case that I have to see the movie again, is the book. There's this book that allows Beast to travel around the world, so he's not really captive. And I'm like, how does this book work? And you can just go wherever you want, really, whenever you want. And 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 I didn't see them take the book with them when they went to those, well, those mom old place. So I'm thinking, how do they get back? Did they click their heels three times and they take the book? So so she <laughs> says that they did take the book. Uh, if you know if they took the book, you can write it in the comments. I, I will see that. This is one of the few Disney live action movies I can say, oh, or the other ones that I said I saw, I enjoyed it. But this is. I can watch it again and again and again. So maybe I can watch it again and again. I'll again. see the book. Uh, but yeah, I was like, wait a minute, how does this work? They're like, you're introducing this level of magic, especially at the end where, oh no, I gotta save Papa. Papa's gonna take it away, and she gets on the horse. And I really don't understand how far away this castle is. At one moment, like the horse can go back and forth, and apparently like half an hour, whereas the villagers take a good two hours to get to the castle. And granted, they're walking, but still, it's like. How far is this castle from the village? Uh, but anyway, also I didn't understand the witch's motivation. In the sense of in the animated film, the witch is only discussed one time. She's in the introduction, she went to the castle, you know, she got denied, so she was built herself to be beautiful, put a spell on things, and went on about her way. But in this, the witch is also this homeless spinster that's in the town begging for change, and she saves Maurice, uh, but she doesn't speak up when Maurice is accusing his Matter of fact, she doesn't really speak. And then at the end, when Belle and Beast are in love and the pedal falls, but she resets everything, it's like, who are you? Are you the town's fairy godmother? Are you the Beast godmother? Are you the Red God? Like, what is your state? Why did you care whether he falls in love or not. Why do you care about what we, Why do you care about what happens to this town? Why do you care? It, it, it's, not, it's not like she reveals herself. Like, like in The Wizard of Oz, you know, uh, Glinda gives um, Dorothy the shoes, and then she goes away, and at the very end, she's, you know, she's like, okay, you always have the power. But maybe she... Basically saying, I wanted you to learn this lesson because I'm the good witch. Whereas this witch is like, I'm going to... say I, nothing. Yeah, it's like, I'm going gonna, gonna to teach this boy, this prince, to be a better person. Why? What What does that do for you? <laughs> what does that do for you to, to, to make this guy a better person? Why are, you, why, are you, why are you homeless? You're a super powerful witch. Why are you homeless? <laughs> she probably didn't want to, you know, because back in that time, if she would have revealed that she was a witch and she would have revealed some of her magic, they probably would have chased her around with pitchforks. Yeah, well, you because she revealed her magic when she turned him into the beast. Yes, but then, but then she turned herself into but, this spinster woman, like yeah. in the, in the um, because she was an old hag when she when the when the when she asked yeah. for help. Yeah, so she could be an old hag. She could be a middle aged woman begging for change. She could be this glorious golden goddess. You know, it's like what is her stake in all this? First, uh, and, and it's like uh, when I say like, why is she homeless? Uh, you, you've seen Brave, okay? Uh, have you seen Brave? Okay. Well, well, I'm brave, you know. Um, You're way behind your time. Mirada goes to see the witch, and the witch has this little cottage. So, like, you know, even if she made a cottage for herself, you know, why is she living out in the street? And if she is living out in the street, then why does she need shelter from the rain? She could just make shelter for the rain. <laughs> it's like, what, you know, in the original, you just have to say, well, witch catch the spell, and that's it. Where here, it's like, if you keep the witch around, I want to know her reason for. What's her stake in this? I don't understand that. Uh, so that's my complaint. You guys, you guys have any thoughts about the uh, ever presence of the witch? <laughs> no, I, I just can't. Not really the witch. Mm -hmm. I mean. All right. Uh, now, getting to one of the things that you didn't like. You didn't like Gaston as far as the chosen actor and his the visual choice of the actor. Uh, go, go talk about that. Um, the visual choice of the, of Gaston was not really appealing. Like in the animated movie, he was he was handsome. You know, he, he was good looking, and even when they do the characters like meet and greets, Gaston is a really handsome dude. And 
You know, he's one that, you know, was appealing to women. This, the gas one they chose to use, I feel, was kind of like, kind of ugly. Kind of like, yeah, really fine. bad, and then, um. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you were saying how you felt that he wasn't visually appealing as yeah, he should be. Yeah, he is Especially seen... compared to uh, some of our uh, <coughs> meeting briefs at our Disney resort. Now, you haven't worked for Disney, but have you uh, gone to any of the uh, meeting briefs with Bell or with yeah. Gaston? We're going to have to do that. We just have to go to all the meeting briefs one of these days once you get to it. Well, I disagree because I love this guest on, and I thought he was handsome. I thought he was glorious. I loved how egotistical <laughs> he was. I was a little disappointed about the no, no, the character, but then again, if you wanted to do that, you'd probably have to hire someone like John Cena or uh, you know, or The Rock or, or Brock Lesnar or something like that to have that super uh, the muscular. Rock. I need you know, The Rock would be in there. You, just you, you, know, you know, it was like, well, well. Oh, uh, yeah. But. How you feel about Gaston is how I feel about Emma Watson because Emma Watson is a very pretty young woman, but she's supposed to be the most beautiful girl in town, and she's pretty, but I don't see her as the most beautiful girl in town. I know many friends at our theme parks who are much better looking young ladies than Emma Watson. So, but then again, beauty is in the eye of the holder. So. You know, mm -hmm. you look at Belle, and you look at Emma Watson, you, you know, think she's perfect visually. I look at her and say, okay, you're good, but I know several friends that are much better. And that's how you probably feel out of this like, But would actor, she be able to do whatever you do to portray Belle? Not, not just the facial features being pretty, but being as that inanimate object. I'm talking to, I'm talking as inanimate object as if she's my best friend. Some of them would, yes. But again, that, that goes across. So, like, how you feel about the sun is how I feel about Emma Watson. Performance wise, fine, but it's like our, I guess, preferences are what we would imagine them to be in live action is a little different. But that again, again goes to uh, 2D versus 3D, you know, like, so, like, this guy's done, he's always has his coat on, which is fine for the character, but you never get to see the super brawny muscles. Yeah. Uh, that, which would have been helpful. But again, you'd have to hire someone like a super bodybuilder. And like while there God. are some bodybuilder actors out there, is, you know, you want someone that can also uh, sing and dance. <laughs> you know, you know, dance how, and heels. How, 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 it, it, dancing heels, if it possible, possibly. So that's a little harder. But uh, but yeah, but so that's how we feel like. So our opinions of the visual look of the actors don't quite match up how we feel they should be. But they're not bad. They're not awful. They're not horrible. I really, really enjoyed the last minutes um, of the of the characters when the last pedal fell. It wasn't just like poof, everything was done. Okay, in the movie. And, and by that she means the progression of the rose falls, and you see all the other the characters. The characters that their their doom is their doom is coming. The, the castle is falling apart, and the servants are becoming uh, full inanimate objects and they stick a body in each other as opposed to just you know so she liked that and the reverse mm -hmm. of it once themselves broken uh they become their human people uh they reunite they hug the townspeople come uh and reunite. And, and, reunite. and actually that's another fix because in the animated film uh the chest of drawers leaps and jumps and lands on a couple of people. So everyone's like, oh my God, they, she should have murdered <laughs> those people. So in this one, no one, uh, no one gets uh, murdered. Someone dies, Gaston dies, which is actually something that you, Did you didn't quite like. You, you felt that she, that in that sequence, he should have died sooner. Yes, he should have uh, died sooner. Did you see it with Fu when he actually started grabbing the inanimate objects? The, like the cat, I don't know what it was, the cancer gloomy, and they started fighting for the castle. Yeah, that was nice. that was like that was like really cool. I mean, like that just kind of just came to me, but you know, it, it was just you know, mm -hmm. it was it was very very beautiful to see things die in in animated sense, and then and then the very next scene after after Big Beast is transformed, it all starts right back up again, as if. You know, even though the curse was set, the last one was fall, everything turned inanimate. Mm -hmm. Beast, to technically, I think Beast, his, his eyes closed like he had died. Mm -hmm. But as soon as Bial said, don't go, I love you, it's like Beast was given shock to the heart, woke up, came back to life, and then transformed. 
it was kind of like no that was the witch Come on, i know come. because the witch the witch came but like you said she she changed that even though the, the her curse was was set mm -hmm. you know you, it was it was set but that's the last rose fell mm -hmm. everything was done it was complete of what she said would happen but how it, it, it just popped back up to life What are your final thoughts on the movie? My final thoughts for the movie is go watch it. It's a very good, very, very good musical. Every, the colors, the graphics, everything was spot on. What are your final thoughts? I really, I really enjoyed the movie, and it was probably it's probably one of my favorite films. I love the movie about Maleficent, how they they gave it a different twist, but I'm kind of glad this one didn't have too much different because Beauty and the Beast is one of my all-time favorites and it was really really hard for me not to sing. Yeah. Really hard. Set up a couple times. Well, that's why you can go watch it again. Over and I'll go watch it again. I'll set two chairs over so that I can, I can, <laughs> I can mouth the words and she's like here shh shush shush. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the song. Shush. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well I guess I'm gonna have to start watching Disney movies. <laughs> Kitty movies. And my final thoughts were or uh, are I think is Probably the best live action Ooh. Disney reimagination to date. All of them have been very good. Uh, I personally hate the latter half of Maleficent, but it's still a good movie. All the live action reimagined is good, but I believe that this is the best, especially because they kept to the musical. They didn't radically change too many things. Uh, and except for the couple odd additions that confused me as a, you know, someone that pays attention to. Uh, uh, narrative and things like that, but it doesn't ruin it for me. That's why my grade is A minus, which I highly stand by. Uh, after our discussion, do you still stand by your A grade? Yes, I do. Do you stand by your A grade? I do. I might move it up. Well, yeah. Well, if this is the end. You gotta have the movie. You gotta move it up that one. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm gonna move mine up to an A plus because, it, like, you was awesome. And the, the little the Gaston thing, yeah, it was a big thing for me. But I think the movie, well, the movie all was like beyond amazing, like mm -hmm. mind blown amazing. So, so a plus now. A plus. A, a minus. <laughs> and a. a. Okay. So no sweetheart here, saying goodbye. <laughs> this is Moody Mayhem, signing off. I'm Heidi O'Neill. Remember, find inspiration everywhere.